Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. And Warren City Council says Mayor Jim Fouts has been spending money without their approval, and now a judge is telling him to stop. Council members uh, taking the mayor to court and winning an injunction. And one of the expenditures in question, a costly image campaign for the city of Warren, starring the mayor himself. Let's get to Grant Herms with the latest on this ruling and this reaction from out there, Grants. Well, Pam, Devin, this is the latest clash between Mayor Fount and the city council. This time, as you said, the city council accusing the mayor of spending money he wasn't authorized to spend at all. The Warren City Council and the mayor in court. Council members winning an injunction against Mayor Jim Fouts. According to court documents filed in Macomb County, the council is accusing Fouts of operating off his own unapproved budget and spending nearly $675,000, including $615,000 on commercials for the city that would have starred the mayor. The council is also concerned there may be other kinds of unauthorized spending happening too, like just last week after city newsletters were sent to every home in Warren. And so far, the council says the mayor hasn't said how much that cost. In a statement, the city council president called Fouts a rogue mayor and talked to Local 4 by video this afternoon. You can't spend money that hasn't been appropriated. And why we had to sit there and ask them to stop so for so many times. Uh, is baffling. Local 4 did reach out to Fouts personally as well as his office, but did not get a response back. Now, in just the last 15 minutes or so, Fouts did send out a statement to us. It says, quote, I respectfully disagree with the judge's ruling, but I am grateful for how fast he made it. My team has a city to run and we need answers. Practically speaking, the decision to freeze spending for the DDA, although is convenient, is probably best until we have a final decision on how to view the budget. Back to you. Is the mayor potentially facing removal or anything like that here? Well, the council president told me not exactly. That can only be done by the voters or the governor, but he is opening himself up to a possible mm. formal investigation from prosecutors, which could mean he could have to pay back this money yeah. himself out of his own pocket. Back to you. All right, Grant. New here tonight at 6, Macomb County Prosecutor Pete Lacido wins a court battle against County Executive Mark Hackle. A lawsuit that stems over Hackle's refusal to fund four new support staff positions in the prosecutor's office. The jobs were approved by the County Board of Commissioners for the 2022 budget, but Hackle refused to implement them because he said the move violated the county's charter. State Court of Appeals ruled today Hackle had limited authority to impound the money. High winds leading to power outages across a big swath of southeast Michigan. Yeah, take a look at the DTE's latest map. Over 16,000 customers are without power tonight. DTE says about 1,200 crews are in the field right now working to restore power to the affected areas. I mean, things have calmed down, but there's still some pretty decent wind gusts out there. So yeah. let's check in with Paul and see just how high was that wind gusting earlier today? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Pamela, it was real strong. I mean, we had a lot of us that were near or even above 50 miles per hour. You can see 52 miles per hour was the peak gust in Ann Arbor, 51 miles per hour in Howell, 52 in Flint, 51 miles per hour in Lapeer, and then a lot of the rest of us were near 50. Very few spots were much below that. So that's the type of wind that you can see what the damage was done. You can see it brings down power lines, limbs, things like that. All right, right now we have significantly cut back on those gusts. Uh, those of us that are reporting gusts right now, reporting gusts between 20 and 30 miles per hour. So that's a little piece of good news, and those will continue to drop during the night. Storm Tracker 4 is showing just a few little spits here, a couple little drips, nothing of any great consequence. So if you're leaving right now, you're heading out the door to head down to the Pistons game, just a couple of drops possible. Temps falling through the 40s into the upper 30s by the end of the game and still breezy through the evening hours. Don't forget the local forecasters app has exactly what you need. It's right in the palm of your hand. Real time radar, temperatures, wind, you name it. We have earthquakes. We have tropical weather, tropical hurricane forecasts and things. All of that just free. Go to the App Store, search under WDIV. It's the best weather app in the nation, guys. All right, Paul, thank you. Closing arguments are up next in the trial of four men accused of plotting to kidnap the governor. The defense rested today after testimony from one of the defendants, Daniel Harris. Local 4 defender Sean Lay live with more on what Harris had to say, including some choice words about the governor. Sean. 
very interesting. Pamela, good evening to you. Look, Daniel Harris is the only one of the four defendants to testify in his own defense today. He's facing life in prison. And as you mentioned, yes, he still shared his very strong views on Governor Whitmer. Prosecutor Jonathan Roth, quote, Governor Whitmer is a tyrant, Daniel Harris said, not really, just a governor to me. Roth said, a nice woman doing her job, Harris said, very poorly. Federal prosecutors showing Daniel Harris his own words in an encrypted chat with other members of the Wolverine Watchmen. Prosecutor Roth, you suggested ways of killing her. Harris, yup. Doming her coming to work, meaning shoot her in her head, correct? Pose as a pizza person and kill her at home with three rounds? Harris said, yep. Harris argued he threw out those violent ideas because he was tired of the group constantly messaging about kidnapping the governor and was 100% against the plan, saying at one point he threw his hat at a meeting he was so tired of the talk. Harris called alleged ringleader Barry Croft a stoned, whacked out pirate, but when Croft alluded to killing people, Harris said he didn't quit the group. Prosecutor Roth asked, Caleb Franks testified that he was definitely going to kidnap the governor. Ty Garbin testified that he was definitely going to kidnap the governor. Harris said, correct. You continue to hang out with them. Correct. You never said, guys, we can't do this. Harris said, correct. Back here live. Now closing arguments bright and early tomorrow in Grand Rapids. Then this case is handed to the jury. We'll be in Grand Rapids covering every detail for you. I'm Defender Sean Lay, Local 4. Pamela, back to you. We'll be looking forward to your continued reports. Thank you, Sean. Now to the war on Ukraine. President Biden says there are indications that Russia's President Vladimir Putin is self-isolating. White House says there are no plans for President Biden and President Putin to talk. Meanwhile, the head of the UK's intelligence agency claims Russian soldiers are low on morale and some are refusing to carry out their orders. Ukrainian authorities are racing to evacuate civilians from several hard-hit cities. Over 100,000 people remain trapped in the city of Mariupol in the south of Ukraine. More than 10 million Ukrainians now have fled their homes. 10 million have fled due to the war. President Biden taking action aimed at easing the pain we're all feeling at the gas pump. He announced today the U.S. will release one million barrels of oil per day from its reserve for the next six months. The White House says the increased supply will provide a bridge to the end of the year when domestic production will ramp up. The president couldn't definitely say how much savings drivers would see at the pump, but he estimates it will be anywhere from 10 to 35 cents a gallon. Currently, the price for an average gallon of regular uh, unleaded here in Metro Detroit is four dollars and 15 cents a gallon. Tonight's Help Me Hank consumer headlines. Zell issuing a warning about a big scam, but really not offering much help. Yeah, plus rising costs for travelers and changes regarding mask mandates. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester live and Hank, we're talking about airline mandates, right? Yeah, absolutely, Pamela. You know, we all make our way to Detroit Metro, any airport across the country right now. You're required to wear that mask, not only at the terminal, but on board. But as you'll see, the airlines working to change that. We begin our Help Me Hang consumer headlines with a big debate over the airline travel mask mandate. It's set to expire on April 18th, but the airlines, including Delta, requesting that it end earlier. Right now, 21 states are working to remove mask mandates on public transport. No information yet on whether the airline mandate will end sooner. Get ready to pay more on vacation. Car and hotel prices up at least 25%. One of the reasons why, a big rental car shortage. It's recommended if you book a trip to always purchase travel insurance. A big Zelle scam that I've been warning you about, victims told to make deposits into Zelle accounts that are run by scammers. It usually involves an elaborate scheme, victims losing an average of $1,500, and Zelle saying today they're not offering reimbursements. If you're scammed, it's on you. I have much more information regarding that particular Zell scam and all the scams that we've been tracking right now affecting Metro Detroiters. They can all be found on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. I'm consumer investigator Hank Winchester. Help Me Hank, Local 4.